The Cat's Elopement. Hi everybody, my name is Natasha and His Royal Highness Prince Bertie the Frog has commanded me to tell you a story, Nori. And so, in a moment, I'll be telling you the story, Nori, of the cat's elopement from Andrew Lang's Pink Fairy Book. But first, here's a piece of gossip I just picked up about Bertie. I spied him this morning, sitting on a lily on the pond. It was a beautiful bright morning, but Bertie looked really, really bored. As you know, he used to be a handsome prince and lived in the palace at the other end of the garden. But now he's a frog and there isn't always much to do in his pond. His little friend, Tim the Tadpole, was swimming round in circles trying to catch his tail and see what it tasted like. When he was fed up with that, he asked, What do they do in the palace on sunny mornings, Bertie? Bertie thought for a moment. He was having trouble remembering because he seemed to have been a frog for an awfully long time. We had school, he said eventually. School? said Tim. What's that? Colin the Carp, who is a bit of a grumpy fish at the best of times, interrupted this conversation and said, School is for creatures with brains. It wouldn't interest you, little Tim, because your brain isn't even the size of a pea. Now Sadie the Swan, who always looks after little Tim's best interests, told Colin the Carp to hush. She added, It's very bad to hurt creatures' feelings. She looked towards Bertie and said, Tell us something you learned, Bertie. I'm sure you were very clever as well as terribly distinguished looking when you were a prince. Bertie thought for a moment. He wasn't quite sure what he had learned in school. There must have been something, because the teacher said an awful lot. But actually, it was quite hard to remember. Go on, go, said Tim excitedly. We'd all really like to learn something. At length, Bertie said, I learned that the world is an awfully big place. Much, much bigger than this little pond. But do you know what, little Tim? Wherever you go, people and creatures have one thing in common. They all love to listen to stories. And when they are listening to a good tale, they are never, never bored. And so, now you know why Bertie has commanded me to tell you his story, which has come all the way to Bertie's pond from Japan. It's called The Cat's Elopement. Now, elopement is a big word. So if you don't know what it means, I had better explain. It's when a girl and boy fall in love with each other and run away together. Well, this story is about a boy cat and a girl cat. And can you guess what happens? You can't? Well, listen quietly and you will find out. Once upon a time, there lived a cat of marvellous beauty, with a skin as soft and shining as silk, and wise green eyes that could even see in the dark. His name was Gon, and he belonged to a music teacher who was so fond and proud of him that he would not have parted with him for anything in the world. Now not far from the music master's house, there lived a lady who owned a most beautiful little pussycat called Korma. She was such a little dear altogether and blinked her eye so daintily and ate her supper so tidily and when she had finished, she licked her pink nose so delicately with her little tongue that her mistress was never tired of saying, Come, come, what should I do without you? Well, it happened one day that these two cats, when out for an evening stroll, met under a cherry tree. 
and in a moment fell madly in love with each other. Gon had long felt that it was time for him to find a wife, for all the ladies in the neighbourhood paid him so much attention that it made him quite shy. But he was not easy to please, and did not care about any of them. Now, before he had time to think, Cupid, the little boy who brings love, had entangled him in his net, and he was filled with love towards Korma. She fully returned his passion, but she saw the difficulties in the way, and consulted sadly with Gon as to the means of overcoming them. Gon asked his master to set matters right by buying Koma, but her mistress would not part from her. Then the music master was asked to sell Gon to the lady, but he refused to listen to any such suggestion, so everything remained as before. At length, the love of the couple grew so strong that they determined to please themselves and to seek their fortunes together. So one moonlight night, they stole away and ventured out into an unknown world together. All day long, they marched bravely on through the sunshine till they had left their homes far behind them. And towards evening, they found themselves in a large park. The wanderers by this time were very hot and tired, and the grass looked very soft and inviting, and the trees cast cool, deep shadows, when suddenly an ogre appeared in this paradise, in the shape of a big, big dog. He came springing towards them, showing all his teeth, and Coma shrieked and rushed up a cherry tree. Gone, however, took his ground boldly and prepared to give battle, for he felt that Coma's eyes were upon him and that he must not run away. But alas, his courage would have been no help to him, because had his enemy touched him, that would have been the end for him. For the dog was large and powerful and very fierce. From her perch in the tree, Coma saw it all and screamed with all her might, hoping that someone would hear and come to help. Luckily, a servant of the princess to whom the park belonged was walking by and he drove off the dog and picking up the trembling Gon in his arms, carried him to his mistress. So poor little Coma was left alone while Gon was carried away full of trouble not in the least knowing what to do. Even the attention paid him by the princess, who was delighted with his beauty and pretty ways, did not console him. But there was no use in fighting against fate, and he could only wait and see what would turn up. The princess, Gon's new mistress, was so kind that everybody loved her, and she would have led a happy life had it not been for a serpent who had fallen in love with her and was constantly annoying her by his presence. Her servants had orders to drive him away as often as he appeared, but as they were careless and the serpent very sly, it sometimes happened that he was able to slip past them and to frighten the princess by appearing before her. One day she was seated in her room playing on her favourite musical instrument, when she felt something gliding up her sash and saw her enemy making his way to kiss her cheek. She shrieked and threw herself backwards, and Gon, who had been curled up on a stool at her feet, understood her terror and with one bound seized the snake by his neck. He gave him one bite and one shake and flung him on the ground where he lay never to worry the princess any more. Then she took Gon in her arms and praised and caressed him and saw that he had the nicest bits to eat and the softest mats to lie on and he would have had nothing in the world to wish for if only he could have seen Coma again. Time passed on. And one morning Gon lay before the house door, basking in the sun. 
He looked lazily as the world stretched out before him, and saw in the distance a big ruffian of a cat teasing and ill-treating a quiet little one. He jumped up, full of rage, and chased away the big cat. And then he turned to comfort the little one, when his heart nearly burst with joy to find that it was Coma. At first, Coma did not know him again. He had grown so large and stately, but when it dawned upon her who it was, her happiness knew no bounds, and they rubbed their heads and noses again and again, while their purring might have been heard a mile off. Poor in poor, they appeared before the princess, and told her the story of their life and its sorrows. The princess wept for sympathy. And promised that they should never more be parted, but should live with her to the end of their days. By and by, the princess herself got married, and brought a prince to dwell in the palace in the park. And she told him all about her two cats, and how brave Gon had been, and how he had delivered her from the enemy, the serpent. And when the prince heard. He swore they should never leave them, but should go with the princess wherever she went. So it all fell out as the princess wished, and Gon and Coma had many children, and so had the princess, and they all played together and were friends to the end of their lives. And that was the story of the cat's elopement. Colin the carp thinks it was a bit soppy, but I like soppy stories sometimes, don't you? Well, Bertie has lots of adventurous stories too, so don't forget to drop by at storynori dot com and look through the archives for more story noris, and tell all your friends to visit too. I'll be back soon. Until then, from me, Natasha. Bye bye.